Frankfurt is the largest city in the state of Hesse, with a population around 800,000 people. A cosmopolitan city that combines modernity and tradition, Frankfurt is both an important cultural center, a major economic hub, and the largest financial center in Germany. It's a city rich in history, culture, and entertainment. Here, centuries-old culture meets current trends, tradition meets modernity, and greenery meets urban ambience, all in perfect architectural harmony. Skyscrapers, glass buildings, and magnificent concrete buildings, 43 towers of varying heights rise into the city sky, and more will join them. The city boasts numerous tourist attractions, which is why we decided to spend two days here and introduce you to this city, which is often called the New York of Europe. The city has over 50 green spaces, and we started our visit with the Chinese Garden. The main entrance to the Chinese Garden officially called Garden of Heavenly Peace, is located near the entrance of Bethman Park. As you will see, it guarantees a change of scenery, and we haven't even entered yet, that we already spot photographers. Hidden behind thick walls, the Chinese garden is an oasis of peace and greenery, covering 4,000 square meters in the heart of Frankfurt. It's open every day and free to visit. The garden was designed based on the model of the Xiuku Gardens in the Huizhou province of southern China, with simple and traditional buildings in the Anhui province style. Construction of the garden, which started in 1989, lasted only five months and was carried out by Chinese artisans who used precious materials imported from China. It features several characteristic elements of Chinese gardens such as marble bridges, pavilions, a large body of water, a waterfall, and rock landscapes. Their arrangement was not left to luck, but reflects various references, including the symbolic language of China. The Chinese garden is also used for cultural events and ceremonies, including the celebration of the Chinese New Year. It's a place that truly invites calm, reading for some, and meditation for others. In any case, this walk in the Chinese garden is an invitation to peace and meditation. This first visit allowed us to relax before returning to the bustle of the city. We headed to the metro, for which we bought a day ticket for 6.5 euros per person, allowing us to travel at a lower cost using all modes of transportation. <laughs> We left the metro and headed towards the city botanical garden, walking along wide and tree-lined streets. The Palman Garden is the city's botanical garden. In addition to its collection of plants, it's also known for its cultural events such as concerts, exhibitions and gardening festivals. It was inaugurated in 1871 and covers an area of 22 hectares. It houses a wide variety of exotic plants, including palms, orchids, cacti, and tropical plants. It's divided into several sections, each showcasing plants from different regions of the world, including Asia, Africa, and South America. 
There's also a large lake with islands and a large greenhouse that houses an impressive collection of tropical plants. We are now heading towards the Natural History Museum and during our walk we catch sight of the Europa Tower which is the name of the city's television tower. It's a self-supporting structure built between 1974 and 1979 by architect Erwin Hein and measures 337 meters in height. We pass by the Natural History Museum inaugurated in 1858 and discover impressive life-size dinosaur exhibits. The museum currently houses over 6 million objects in its permanent collections. It features exhibitions on a variety of subjects including biology, geology, paleontology and astronomy. Visitors can see dinosaur fossils, mammoth skeleton, rare botanical specimens and rock and mineral samples from all over the world. We are now walking towards the Skyline Garden. We can see the Mesotome skyscraper which stands 257 meters tall and has 63 floors 54 of which are habitable. It was built in 1990 and was then the tallest skyscraper in Europe until 1997. Facing the exhibition center, we can find the statue of Mercury, the god of merchants and thieves, donated by banker Anton Hahn in 1909. The statue was created by his sons in 1916 in memory of their father and is made of bronze in real size. The Hammering Man, created by American artist Jonathan Borowski in 1990, is located at the base of the building. It's a monumental and moving sculpture representing a worker with a hammer. The sculpture stands about 21 meters tall and weighs 32 tons. This is one of many similar sculptures created by Borowski around the world. The first hammering man was created in 1981 for an art exhibition in New York. Since then, similar versions of the sculpture have been installed in several cities around the world, including Seattle, Washington DC and Frankfurt. The Skyline Garden is located at the top of the Skyline Plaza shopping center in the Mesa district. It's a rooftop terrace where visitors can relax and enjoy a refreshing drink or ice cream while enjoying the view. The Alex restaurant is also located on the terrace and offers a variety of dishes. In addition, the Skyline Garden regularly hosts small concerts and shows, making it an ideal place to unwind after a day of shopping. head back to the metro and make our way to the Opera Square. Behind the historic facade of the old Frankfurt Opera House is one of the most remarkable concert halls in all of Germany and Europe. The building was constructed in 1880. Destroyed during the World War II, it only reopened on August 28, 1981. Visitors are offered a high-quality program covering all musical genres, including classical music, jazz, blues, pop, rock, as well as musicals and world-renowned show productions. The Congress section of the Alte Oper organizes about 50 events per year and enjoys a great reputation. Glamorous balls and international congresses take place in the building's halls and salons. Rothschild Park was once the great estate of the Rothschild family who purchased the 4.5 hectare property in 1816. The palace and large parts of the park were destroyed during Allied bombing in World War II. The park was restored after the war, but its appearance has changed and only a restored neo-Gothic tower remains. Nearby, 
we discover the ring of statues created by George Kolb in 1954. Seven bronze sculptures, a little larger than real, are exuding an impression of melancholy and 14 basalt columns form a circle in the center of which an echo effect resonates. We have now arrived in front of the iconic Euro sculpture near the former headquarters of the European Central Bank, a symbol of Frankfurt's role in managing the common currency. It's also one of the most photographed objects in the city and frequently appears in articles about the ECB. The sculpture was in danger after the banks that funded its maintenance withdrew their support. However, on September 27, 2022, a cryptocurrency company called Casecoin, based in Frankfurt, became the new sponsor, avoiding the sculpture being auctioned off. We continue our walk and discover several statues. The modern Olympus of Weimar, which was erected in place of the historic monument of Goethe when it was returned to its original location in 2007. The statue of Beno El Khan was erected in 1920 in memory of the fallen of the First World War. The statue of Friedrich Schiller, author of William Tell and the poem Output Joy, features a laurel wreath which emphasizes the importance of the author who played a major role in German literature. We now arrive at the fairy tale fountain. It's an Art Nouveau fountain that stands 8 meters tall and was completed in 1910, founded by the patron Leo Gans and created by the sculptor Friedrich Christoph Haussmann. The bronze figures were melted down during World War II and were not replaced for a long time. With the help of photographs from the 1920s, they were reconstructed in 2005-2006. We are passing by the first autonomous Jewish museum in the Federal Republic of Germany, which was inaugurated on November 9, 1988, by Chancellor Helmut Kohl. Through its collections, the Jewish Museum bears witness to 900 years of Jewish history and culture in the city of Frankfurt. End of the tour for this first day. Night is falling, and we are heading towards one of the best Vietnamese restaurants in the city. You might say, not really a local cuisine, but Frankfurt being a cosmopolitan city, we have set our sights on Asian cuisine. Perfect service and exquisite food. See you tomorrow for our second day of Discoveries.